Where are we at, Patrick? B. W. C. A. Patrick is my, you're my son-in-law, right? I think technically, yes. Yes. And I do the government. <laughs> and we are out here for four days. We're, uh, I don't know, off the Gunflint Trail. And we're going to go to Gaskin and make it to Winchell Lake. And then we're going to hammer lake trout, eat them, and then work our way back. That's the plan. And where's the first portage? Our first portage is straight through there. Entry point 47, Liz Lake. And it's perfect weather. Moose are in rut. When you, the moose are in rut. The moose yep. are in rut and the bear are active. That's what they said. Ranger. Ranger Bill said that. Boom. First portage actually entering the boundary waters. A fork? <laughs> Is there a sign back here? Is there a sign right there? Oh. Oh yeah, this goes through. Yes. I think it's like winter cross country shit. Pretty good. Nice. The first, the first in. Okay, one thing I learned. Hey, thanks for uh, talking me out of bringing that other 175 a jack. Oh, good fucking call. <laughs> yes. Yeah, they have a rule about that, I think. What's your target species? Going for northern pike. Throwing on. Starting with a black and white. Bad shad. Cordell. Ten. Is it Cordell? Ten feet. Dive ish. Eight to ten. I can't fish until tomorrow at 11.03, Minnesota regs, because I wanted to save $7 and not get the uh, seven day fishing license. Stick it to the man. But I will paddle you like a Minn Kota trolling motor. First cast. Nice. Some wood. <laughs> so we just came in. Liz Lake and we're hitting Caribou and we're going to go around and drop into Horseshoe Lake. So I was reading about the fishing too this time of year, the weed beds are still hanging on. Yeah. That's what you're targeting? So the fit, yeah, just the edges of them, I guess. The deepest parts of them. Double carry, like it. We're through. Horseshoe Lake. We're doing it. Yeah, so I, I think this is our uh, campsite for the night, for the first night. We even got some twigs for the twig stove. Some trees down. So plenty of firewood, we don't even have to find it. And it's kind of secluded, other than we don't have an opening to the water for a spectacular view. Unpack and make camp and then probably go out fishing for a bit. How's the shitter? Good. This is the one, eh? I think so. All right, let's do it. Big spot over there for a tent too, the flat spot. Yeah, per down. Yep.
it was a good day, huh? Besides the fishing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We didn't try too hard. Not one bite. You can say it's the lake. Yeah, I don't think there's fish in this one. So we got dinner heating up. We got uh, camp pretty much ready. This is, I'm just sleeping under a tarp. Unless it rains, then I'm jumping in the tent with him. We're going to the next lake tomorrow morning. Try that. And then on to Winchell to try to catch lake trout. Morning, day two. <clears throat> I'm going to mix these.
Well, we're on uh, Gaskin now, and we've been fishing for a solid hour. Yeah, and haven't had a bite. Not one bite. I've used a small crankbait and a Mr. Twister. And Patrick has used every lure made. <laughs> and there's nothing. So I don't know what the deal is. Well, this is the portage from Gaskin to Windchill. So we, uh, Gaskin's not a good fishing lake, according to me and Patrick. According to the specialists? Yeah. But we both suck as fishermen, or at least I do. But um, we did see a dead fish, so that's a good sign. And some moose shit. And moose shit on an island. This is a pretty tough portage. It's not very long, but it's very steep uphill to windchill and I'm on my second carry here yeah we get the legs burning so this is windchill I would say the prettiest lake so far it's got a that burn again it's very long and semi-narrow and deep so we're gonna try for some lake trout see what we can do we just passed these guys and I we passed them on that big tall portage and at the peak I seen him and I'm like how's it fishing he goes it isn't <laughs> like that's bad so but he had a fish locator and he said they were down 30 feet but he couldn't get that deep with the lures he had so we're gonna try it dude there's cliffs over there it's like a forge what do they call that Fjord. Fjord. This is uh, the third campsite from the east. So we'll see what Patrick thinks. Day two. Got up on Horseshoe Lake today. A little late start, but hanging out, enjoying it. Went down south. Portage. Pretty long one, almost a hundred rods into the next lake, which was Meads, I can't remember, portaged into Winchell Lake. That's cool. Do it. Some other paddlers and none of them. Okay. We'll see if we can rectify that. My wife would love, D would love this. Right here, sit right there and put your feet in the water. Well, we just uh, drifted down the lake probably over a mile and uh, vertical jigged pretty much the whole way with a Rapala and nothing not one bite even got in this little cove over here and tried that we went uh, in the middle of the lake and toward the edge and nothing disappointing now we gotta make our way back it looks like the wind's kicking up and it's coming from the east, and this this like lake is miles and miles long, so we don't want to get uh, a little sketchy out there right now. So, start white, white caps are starting to whip up. This is 
the, the little creek coming out of Windchill near a campsite. is above those boulders. Water levels like you. Yeah. You think it'd be just blasting through? Yeah, you think it'd be blasting through there. I bet you when it's high water, because the water's down about a foot, or like snow melt. Yeah. This is cool. I wouldn't be surprised to see a hobbit running around here. Maybe Squatch? Yeah. Thought I heard some knocks earlier. Yeah, there's a little pond and it's only 50 yards away from the main lake. 10 yards below it? Yeah. Well, we didn't catch any, any fish today, and uh, we're gonna try to get to bed earlier today. Wake up in the morning and then try to make it to Pillsbury, and then uh, camp there. If we see a better camp, we'll stop, but then uh, try to go to Mead the next day, and then camp on an island, and then have a easy day that day. That's the plan, and catch fish. Fish a little more wind chill tomorrow, go through Omega, get to Pillsbury. Henson, Henson, Henson. Omega, Henson, Pillsbury, and catching fish. Awesome, awesome morning. 
Really cool looking. Unfortunately, I slept like shit last night. I had mice crawl on me the whole night. I don't have a, like a, I just have a tarp and I'm laying underneath it. I don't have a floor, it's not enclosed. <clears throat> but it was warm. Really cool view. I'm surprised there's not a pictograph of a fish with a circle around it and a slash through it on this cliff over there. We catch a fish, I'll come take it. <laughs> Don't have to tell you. Omega Lake, which is very pretty, and um, super cool lake. Though I think there's three campsites on this one. A lot of cliffs. Pretty cool. We got some moose tracks right there. Right along the portage. And then right there, you see where it scraped the rock a little bit, boom. Maybe we'll get lucky and uh, we'll be in the next lake hanging out by the water. Henson Lake. Long and narrow. All the way down, there's five campsites.
It's got him. I can fart. <laughs> Pretty awesome, eh? He's still sitting. So we get on Henson Lake. We only paddled like a quarter mile. And the eagle's flying above us. We saw a fish jump, so they they do exist. And then, like, we happen to hear something turned around and 40 yards back because a moose coming out. Back to our right. Mm-hmm. Pretty big guy. Big antlers. Yeah. Yeah, if one guy took a a piss or something, we would have never seen it. If we were like 30 yards farther, we probably wouldn't even heard him. And this lake is one little arrow straight through. Yeah, it's like a river, but he's still sitting there. It's too far now to... Pretty cool. Bucket list check. Oh, boundary water's moose. <laughs> All right, we're coming to the portage out of Henson to Pillsbury and we trolled this entire what like three mile lake whole thing and zero fish thank you no fish what's worse did you see a moose no what's that did you guys see that moose no <laughs> <laughs> yeah I know it sucks there were some people behind us, and uh, we, we thought the timing would be right, because last time I looked back, that moose was still there. And uh, then I look back, I don't know, 20 minutes later, and I see people. So I'm like, they must have seen it. So they followed us all the way to the end of the lake, and I just asked them, and they're, they're like, no, we didn't see it. Where was that? So that sucks for them. I could see somebody just paddling right past one, though. Going right next to it. Yeah, yeah you get kind of zoned or something, and... They don't make any noise. They just watch you walk, you know, go Never by. Still. Well, we were there. Right. This is a really nice tr trail into uh, Pillsbury. Nice portage trail. Pretty easy and clean. Where we might be camping tonight. Pillsbury? Yes. As of right now, I don't like the look of it, though. But really, that's only our only option unless we go way up to Mead. This is the uh, East campsite on Pillsbury. It's kind of a really little dinky lake. There's two campsites. The East one is better than the West one. Yeah, the West one would be an okay, like one man, need a spot to stay. Yeah. This one's got two tent areas and the other one kind of only had one decent one. So we've hit the fishing pretty hard and haven't caught anything, but we saw that bull moose today, which was awesome. And I uh, got lucky seeing him. On Eagle just before. That's been saving grace for the fishing. Yeah. 
All that wasted time fishing timed it perfect to see that moose. Exactly. All those extra laps. Yeah. We've been fishing hard though and using tons of different lures and uh, nothing. So, I don't know. Every person we've seen said the same thing. Yeah. One guy said he caught, it, those two guys caught one fish each and he even said it was lucky, whatever that means. Oh. But, yeah. One walleye and one small mouth each. Well, tomorrow we'll get in the mead, probably fish a little bit of that, and then to care, back to Caribou and uh, camp there somewhere and try our hand at that lake. The moral of the story is bring food for every night. Don't bet on eating fish. <laughs> We've been hearing uh, moose calls all morning for the last hour so we're gonna paddle down and see if we can see him or or maybe even call him in i'm gonna try my moose calls That's a cool picture right there, dude. Don't. See that one? That fish came all the way out of the water to the right. This is feeding time, I guess. We'll see. We're gonna go get our poles and cast. Look at that easel painting. Let's go. Yeah! do exist. Take a picture of this monumental fucking... <clears throat> I don't have my thing. It's bleeding all over me. They do exist. Can you flip it open for me? Sorry. All right, 
Rocks, paper, scissors, who has to carry the big pack on the long portage? That's that three? First one. Always, that's always the rule. Rock, paper, scissors, or rock, paper, scissors, shoot? Rock, one, two, throw. One, two, throw. Cool. One, two, throw. That's that three? Oh, that's the first one. Yes. Oh, go fuck yourself. What a good battle to start. Watch, this one's like a mountain, and the other one's flat and has like a rail system flat with a cart. This is the Portage, what lake? Pillsbury to, I don't know, some small lake. So, I'm going full commando. Because it's swallow. like 80 degrees right now. Swallow. Little swallow. Yeah. Looks cool. Lake. Right, good. Swallow. Swallow. Swallow Lake. Between Meads North and where were we yesterday? Pillsbury. Pillsbury South. We just paddle 75 yards and do a hundred some rod portage. Well, this is Mead Lake. I don't know if there's some storms brewing. Hopefully not. Ideally no storms. We'll give this lake a try fishing. I'm gonna tie on a deep diver and see how it works. And you, he's doing the same. And we'll just troll for a bit. This is one of the 15 rods out of uh, Mead into Caribou. It's pretty cool looking here. I don't know what this creek is gonna bring, but uh, it's different than what we have been seeing. So it's kind of cool to have a little bit of diversity. I think I might get caught with my pants down. <laughs> so, we didn't catch any fish on mead. We, I did catch that one northern on Pillsbury this morning, but I don't think um, he was hungry. I think he was just yawning in the wrong direction at the wrong time, and my lure got him. cool. Yeah, get to the other side. Um, I got, I feel good about, I got my shit. Good. good. Yeah. 
Down. Artist? Is he in the rat pack? Yep. Is it Frank? Nope. Fuck, I don't know. If we had one of those, where would it be? Not South Dakota? Nebraska? Right next to the, the circled fish? Looks like the, the line's been worn out over time. Yes. But it's also moving in a weird way. Good thing we keep going towards it. I didn't expect this at all. This is awesome. Yeah, you gotta work a little different. Yeah. Figure it out.
Well, there's a big storm coming, so we're on the last lake out of the Boundary Waters. So we're gonna cut it short a day and not set up camp just to sit in it in a storm. So we can wake up tomorrow and do what we're doing now. We'll just do it now. So that's the plan. Should hammer us here. But imagine the next half hour. Get you cap off the trip. Be cool. All right, that's a wrap. We're on a uh, pop poplar poplar yeah. poplar lake. We're out of the boundary waters. Got to get to the landing um, where the car is, and then drive home. It's going to be about six hours, and it's uh, three thirty. So we came out a day early. It ended up not raining. I don't know if it still will. It's still dark back there, but I don't hear any more thunder, of course. But we weren't catching any fish. So it would have just been another night at camp and pitching on everything or whatever. And I honestly like traveling more than anything else. So otherwise, good trip. Saw a bunch of stuff. Everything but a bear and fishing. So. All right. Out. Solid trip. Yep. <laughs>